Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reviewing a double O gauge model. This particular model is the class 4575 small Ferrari tank engine produced by Backman Branch Line. Looking at the model through the box, it looks to be of a very fine quality, which we've come to expect from Backman. It also appears to have a detail packet. I don't know if you can see that. Let me, uh, no, you can't really. But it also has some information sheets. On the end of the box is the locomotive's product code being 32-137A. This basically means you can search for it, I guess, on the Backman website. It's a class 4575 Prairie tank numbered 4592 in BR black weathered. It has an eight pin DCC decoder. Looking at the box, we have plenty of Backman emblems on the top, on the sides, on the front. Looking at the back of the box, we have a brief history of the locomotive. Pause the video now if you wish to read that. I will remove the plastic, uh, the cardboard sleeve and read out a few brief notes. While I give you a chance to look at the locomotive, if I can get rid of that horrid glare so the 4575s were a small prairie type based on the earlier 4500s they had an increased water capacity of 300 gallons with housed in larger tanks with sloping front ends the weight was thereby increased to 61 tons a hundred were built at Swindon Works between 1926 and 29, designed for branch line operations. The last four of these locomotives were withdrawn in December 1964. Eleven of these tank engines survive into preservation. I can think of one being preserved at Didcot Railway Centre in Oxfordshire. I am not sure if 45... 92 is preserved itself, but I know 5572, I believe, at Didcot Railway Centre is preserved with auto gear as fitted 1963, 1953 for working short branch line services in the Welsh Valleys. The box is of the traditional ice block packaging type, so we will take the ice block, which encases the engine, out of its protective cardboard case. As you can now see, there is a small detail packet in there. It looks to contain one brake pipe, some brake rigging, and what I can guess are cylinder drains. We have some information sheets come with the locomotive. Let's have a look at those. So the first one appears to be a locomotive service sheet. I will flatten this out and then move the camera to show it to you. It shows all the part numbers and I guess it's so that you can replace one if you accidentally lose or damage it which will come in useful, I'm going to admit, because I tend to lose things when I DCC my models. Right, looking at the Collectors Club information, which I'm sure people have seen a hundred times before, but I'll show it again. It's basically just telling you what you get and it's Advertising it basically. Turn the page. What's inside? Forgive the book I'm using. I don't have a proper desk at the moment. Uh, it also has the warranty service request and 
Oh, it talks about the running in period, which I've already done. Cleaning and maintenance, lubrication, DCC, curves and storage. It's basically just some model guidance. Talks about the product warranty as well. Just in case you want to make sure your model will be safe. Moving the model back into focus, we will now unbox it fully. Right, now looking at the locomotive, we can slide the plastic sleeve off. We are now able to actually see the engine. So if we have a look at the detail packet, it does appear to have two cylinder drains, some brake gear and a vacuum or steam heating pipe of some sort. Looking at the back of the engine, there are no holes for extra detail. But looking at the front, there's potentially a small hole for the vacuum pipe. Right, now taking it out of the ice block. Let's gently remove the locomotive. There's protection where the locomotive comes into contact with the plastic, both above and below. And also there appears to be some little padding focus there. Uh, right there for the side tanks, most likely. Moving that out of shot, we can now focus on the locomotive. Looking at the side of the locomotive, it has lots of rivets. I'll just see. The emblem and number plate along with the power classification is all very finely printed. And I'm sure, as you can see, there are many rivets for the rivet counters out there. And they follow the lines of the tank. Unfortunately, it hasn't got sliding cab plates, which I have seen on O-Gage models on YouTube before. Moving around to the front of the locomotive. Again, very crisply printed number plate i can't however quite make out that shed plate is visible to me i'm not sure if it'll be visible to you guys but it reads 82a looking at the locomotive the uh, buffers are sprung I have had this out of the box and unfortunately during transit this buffer here had been broken so a little bit of glue has fixed that. It has very fine detail. It's got all of the lamp irons at the front. It appears to have lubricator just there. It's got nice steam pipes which, but they don't appear to quite touch the model. Bit of a shame. They have metal handrails. Uh, looking at the top of the locomotive, there's detail. It looks like the safety valve bonnet may be removable. I'm not sure why that would be. Uh, the tank look. The tanks look very fine. They have the extended water cap fillers to compensate for the sloping fronts which is very nice. There does appear to be no whistle back plate though, which it, I believe is quite common on Western engines. I'm not sure about that. Looking at the back of the locomotive, we can see it has a lot of detail. It's got lots of, it's got a prefitted vacuum pipe. Again, sprung buffers uh, and lots of lamp irons. Moving around to the other side of the logo, the logo and number are just as crisply printed. 
and the wheels look quite tidy well painted it's got all the sand gear i think that is and the injectors looking at the base of the locomotive it's rather tidy there i think there's your holes for the oh the part of the detail packaging it has nem pocket it has nem couplers but they don't appear to be in the pockets they appear to be mounted so i'm not sure about those they may be they may be fixed to the front and rear pony trucks i'm not sure I will just go and get a torch to have a look in the cab, guys. Be back in a minute. Well, that point's a bit dodgy. Oh, yeah, I think that point's dodgy, guys. Bring it back onto the goods yard. See if it can collect the wagons that are just out of shot. Right. Oh, that was a uh, got caught on something there, guys. I'm gonna have to check this track over after this, I think. Oh, I've put it the wrong way, guys. Hold on. Was that nearly ended in catastrophe there? He's a little bit jerky, but that's that coupled up. I'm not the best driver, I must admit, guys. Looks quite happy there, doesn't it? Oh dear, that was nearly an accident. looks quite happy. I will service this engine because I do doubt it's had one because it is second hand. Right, that's clear of those points. Just back into the other siding. Looks quite happy, doesn't it, guys? I would say it's a really good model because not only is it good detail, but I do have another one of these, I think, somewhere. And it runs far better than this one. I think I might give this a bit more running in. Okay, I'm back, guys, and I now have a torch. So let's have a look in the cab. On this side, we can see what appears to be some a brake handle. Not sure how well you guys can see in the cab. Oh, there's a reversing lever on the other side. You might have to take my word for this, guys. The back of the cab, there's minimal detail. What there is is moulded. And there is, there is, does appear to be detail on the boiler back head. But what there is, it's moulded and it's not picked out in colour, which is a bit of a shame, Backman. I mean, what's this? This is a £100 model, and there isn't really much cab detail. Oh, well. The coal load appears to be removable, and I will see if I can prove that the whole cab comes off, guys. Um, potentially. Let me have a look. I will be back in a minute. 